Hey, what's up guys? Hope everybody's doing well and having a great day. In this video, we're going to take a trip partially around the world. We're going to Western Europe, the Northeastern United States, where there was an incredibly bright fireball the other day, one in the Central Plains. We've got a hurricane getting ready to make landfall here in the next 36 hours in Southwest New Mexico. I want to show you guys an event that occurred up here off of the, the coast of the Pacific Northwest involving a shipping container and 40 containers that were somehow flipped off of a large ship a couple of days ago, leaving 40 containers floating out in the Pacific Ocean. More than likely a side effect of this massive low pressure system. Actually, there's two. This is the first one that made landfall a couple of days ago, or at least what's left of it. There's yet another one making landfall right now as I do this video. You can see the hurricane down here getting ready to make landfall in the southwestern part of New Mexico. That would be Hurricane Rick, more than likely making landfall as a category one, category two storm. Doesn't have a lot of horsepower. So as you can see here on the map, right after it makes landfall, it's going to very quickly descend back down to a tropical storm or a tropical depression. But it is moving very slowly, and you can tell it's got a, a very large rain component with it. It's not necessarily, again, a very high-end hurricane, but it is going to make landfall about 150 miles north of Acapulco in the next 36 hours. I want to take you guys over to the website. Quick look at the Schumann Resonance. You can see in the last 24 hours, there's been a, a very large spike in the Schumann Resonance. Right now, origins unknown as solar activity globally is pretty quiet. Quiet. Looking at the planetary K index for the last 36 hours, not much activity at all. If anything, it's gotten quieter in the last three days than it has been in the last week. Popping over to the Yellowstone supervolcano caldera, looking at the seismographs that monitor the mighty supervolcano. A little bit of earthquake activity in the northern part of Yellowstone Lake. Other than that, the, the normal magma intrusion that we see scattered around the caldera, that's the, the darker blue signatures you see on the seismographs. But other than that, pretty quiet at the supervolcano caldera. I want to take you guys now over to the American Meteor Society. And as you can see, the trend continues. October 23rd saw three major fireball events, all in the United States. The 20th saw two, one in Western Europe. That was the one I wanted to show you guys at least a picture of. Here's a photo from the American Meteor Society of the event that occurred on October 20th over Hungary. You can tell this was a icy meteor as it had a very profound long tail in the sky. That photo was submitted by Zoltan from Hungary via the American Meteor Society. I've got a video from October 23rd. This was early in the morning taken by a young lady by the name of Julie Reed from Quebec, Canada. This showed up on her YZ outdoor cam. Now, that was a very bright fast-moving meteorite in the upper northeastern part of the United States. The other two meteors were in the Central Plains. This one here in the upper northeast was witnessed in multiple states. The other two events were in the Central Plains. This one had 39 reports of witnesses extending from Ottawa, Canada, all the way down into southern Connecticut. And as you can see on the map here, there was sound heard by some of these witnesses that, that saw this meteor enter the atmosphere. We'll click on this one here from South Central Connecticut, Senate by Jim W. He said it was exciting yet a little nervous, wondering if anybody or anything was damaged. This thing was so profound. He said he heard sound and he felt his house shaking as that meteor entered the atmosphere. So once again, more meteors entering the atmosphere. And again, these are just the ones that were reported. This isn't counting the ones that were not reported. I want to take you guys now up to the Pacific Northwest, an event that occurred on October 22nd of 2021. There was a shipping container that was influenced by the, the very large low pressure system that impacted the western part of Canada and the upper northwestern part of the United States. We're over here at Fox 13 out of Seattle, article dated October 22nd of 2021. 40 shipping containers are adrift in the Pacific Ocean as rough seas knock them off of a ship just west of the Strait of Juan de Fuca, and that would be right in this area here. In fact, here's where the containers are currently in the water, and the Coast Guard is out here monitoring the containers for safety reasons. Going back to the article out of Fox 13 Seattle, and there's a photo posted here by the Coast Guard. You can see three of the 40 containers in the ocean 
floating right now as I do this video. They also made a post on their Twitter page, USCG out of the Pacific Northwest. Goes on to say Coast Guard crews are monitoring several adrift shipping containers 43 miles west of the Straits of Juan de Fuca. An inbound vessel lost approximately 40 containers when the ship listed to its side due to rough seas. And today they have high wind warnings. At the top of this report goes on to say a high wind warning in effect from Sunday morning. That would be today at 6 a.m. through Sunday evening at 6 p.m. As there's been a series of very large low pressure systems that almost have the appearance of a large swirling hurricane. And this is the energy that's left over from the, the first low pressure that made landfall over here that caused the ship to tilt to its side and basically what happened 40 containers would be the equivalency to what you see right here on the front of the ship that stack of containers is actually like 45 containers 40 of those containers went off into the water and are currently floating in the water right now as I do this video. If we come over here to marinetraffic.com, you can see all the trade routes via water right here in near real time. It's actually kind of cool. You can see the cargo containers. You can see the oil tankers. The oil tankers are the red ships. The green ships are the, the cargo containers. And the one that lost its cargo was right here in this area. And you can see here ships currently entering and leaving that port. And there's also a port down here in Long Beach, California. This is the busiest port we have in the United States. And right now, there's a lot of ships sitting out here waiting to be unloaded. And what this website does, kind of like Flight Radar, it just monitors the movement of ships in the ocean. Like Flight Radar monitors planes in the sky. These two are, in a sense, trade routes. I've noticed over the last year, when air traffic slowed down, um, these kept going. The trade routes kept going, and most of the planes that I saw in the skies were cargo planes. So in a sense, these are trade routes, very busy trade routes, like you see over here at Marine Traffic. These two are very busy trade routes. Well, when there's a slowdown in these trade routes, like you see down here in the Long Beach area, these green circles represent ships. If I zoom in closer, you'll see that these are indeed ships waiting to unload in the Long Beach area. Some of these ships have been sitting here for quite some time. You can click on any of these green dots and it'll tell you how long the ship's been parked here. It left its destination on September 27th. This particular vessel arrived here October 8th and it's been anchored right there with all of this cargo. Let's just click on another one, just a random one right here. Here's another cargo ship, very large cargo ship. Been sitting here since the 18th. Departed its destination on the 26th arrived on the 18th. Let's click on another one. Let's click on this one here. I'm just picking some at random. Uh, this one departed its location on the 26th, arrived on the 14th, and it's now the 23rd, and it's still waiting to be unloaded. And the thing about these ships is, you can't unload these things in five minutes. These things are huge. They carry a lot of cargo, and it takes a long time not only to load these ships, but to unload these ships. This one here departed on September 27th, arrived over here on the 18th of October, and it's still waiting to be unloaded. Here's the thing. These ships, whether they're, they're sitting idly here, anchored, waiting to unload, or they're moving, they have a large crew. It takes a lot of people to manage one of these ships, and they continue to be paid each day that they're sitting here, and they consume resources. The ship consumes resources. So just applying basic common sense, the longer the ship sits here idly waiting to unload, the more resources it's going to consume just to maintain its day-to-day -day operations, and that's going to increase increase the cost of this overall shipment and that increase ends up ultimately getting passed on to the consumer and it shows up on the shelves in the form of higher prices. That's one of the reasons you see inflation. And there's nothing they can do about it. I mean, the, the port is only so big, and you can only unload one of these very large ships so fast. In fact, there's no fast way to do it. You have to do it slowly and safely. So right now, we have a large number of ships waiting off the coast of, of Long Beach to be unloaded. So if you've been waiting on a shipment of a variety of things, who knows? I mean, there's all kinds of different things sitting 
sitting out here waiting to be unloaded. But that's one of the main trade routes that we have here in the United States with regard to the ocean. There's trade routes in the sky, and they have been ongoing. And I really didn't see a big interruption in the air traffic, at least with regard to cargo. But we're seeing a bottleneck here. That's what they call that, a bottleneck. And cargo is sitting out here waiting in some cases, a few weeks to be unloaded. So looking at the big picture, you can see how important these trade routes are with regard to keeping supplies and, and various resources on the move all the time. Resources are moving around the globe 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And if there's one interruption in the supply chain, it can disrupt the entire supply chain, at least temporarily until it can be fixed. But until that fix is implemented, it could equate into temporary shortages here and there based off of supply and demand. And if you guys have noticed these changes, leave a comment down in the comment section. This doesn't have anything to do with the, the shipping issue, but Paul out in New York shared this photo with me of recent steak prices. Again, not related to, to shipping, but I'm just showing you an example of inflation. $23.99 per pound strip steak. $29.99 ribeye steak. Here's another one that he shared from his local market. Steak, $69.99 a pound. Ribeye steak here, $31.99 a pound. I can remember just a couple of years ago at our local supermarket, ribeye steak being on sale for $7.99 a pound. So this here, in my opinion, based off of my own travels, and like I said, not too long ago, seeing ribeye steak on sale for, for $7.99 a pound, I think that's an example of hyperinflation. But back to the, the shipping routes, we have shipping routes by air, by sea, and then also by land. Once these shipments do arrive on land, they are loaded on large trucks and then delivered cross country to every location across North America. And if there's one small glitch in that supply chain it can create a domino effect that's experienced by everybody thanks for watching have a super day and be safe out there